Hi everybody, I am Manuel Corbus and this is Corbus Playthings. So today I come to review a 19th classic that I love and an, that I rewatched. I was uh, reminded of why I consider this one of my top supernatural and witchcraft movies and why it is considered a classic of witchcraft in pop culture. And I'm of course speaking of the craft. Uh, here's the Spanish name. You are sickened by the weakness of a heart that's filled with fear. In case you don't know, in case you have been living under a rock for all of these decades, there was an alien in my throat that was released on uh, May 3rd, if I recall correctly, of uh, 1996. It is directed by Andrew Fleming and it stars uh, Fairuza Balk, Rachel True, Nick Campbell and I always forget this girl, Robin Tunney, Tunney, Tani, and Spaniard. That, that, that will always be my excuse. <laughs> The premise of this film is actually pretty easy, although it was transgressive in its year. A new girl in town, Sarah Bailey, that moves with her dad and she goes to a Catholic school where she doesn't fit in, she doesn't know anybody and she basically joins the freaks. And these freaks are three girls that are trying to use witchcraft to uh, pursue their aims and to basically control their environment. Uh, but because of the magic they practice, they need a fourth girl to represent the four elements. And these three girls see in Sarah a possible fourth element to complete the circle. This film is one of the first... Um, good representations of witchcraft in pop culture and in movies particularly and it is very empowering toward discriminated minorities. There are lots of topics that it touches and it is quite groundbreaking for the time and because of this this is also the gateway or one of the pop culture gateways to real life witchcraft which is a spiritual practice that many people practices many people practice nowadays and it's not about levitating or cursing people but this being the first or one of the first movies that basically uh, shies away from the satanic old hag anti-christian type of witchcraft and gives a new light a new chance of approaching witchcraft, many young people actually started to explore witchcraft related themes such as the neo-pagan religion of Wicca, in which the witchcraft of this movie is really inspired by and we will talk about that later. I will do as always and give my pros and cons about this movie. So as pros, as positive elements is the the, the, the story, the, the premise, is very original for its time. Also, as I said, it was one of the first movies that didn't represent witchcraft as a satanic practice, but that it was something else, something different, something that wasn't even related to Christian mythology. This caused that uh, neo-paganism and modern witchcraft was seen by the general public with a much better light and that more people explored these themes and that they were less discriminated against. The movie is funny, it's a uh, dog and it's transgressive in its own way so that's I think the formula that got it to being the iconic witchcraft movie that it is today and that is loved by both uh, witches and uh, skeptics. One thing that I love is that I always focus on 
how realistic the witchcraft is. I don't need it to be real, but I need it to be realistic. But it has elements of high fantasy, but it's a fantasy that is plausible. The elements aren't so violent, because if it's too visual, it is aggressive to our knowledge and understanding. Another interesting thing is that it has many interesting topics that it explores uh, that goes from the sexual awakening of young girls, racism, sexism, the corruption that power entails usually. Great power implies a great responsibility. And now I look like Peter Parker's uncle. I particularly like the exploration of ethical themes. In the film, in case you don't know, a love spell is performed and is aimed to someone who is basically a scumbag. And he falls in love, but he is so insistent and she rejects him so much that in the end she almost gets raped. That, that's where I like the exploration of the ethics of witchcraft. It's like, was the spell too selfish and in, it ended up wrong? Or do you put a spell on the wrong person and yeah, he fell in love with you, therefore he tried to rape you because that's what he would do. It is also interesting some uh, behind the scenes uh, elements that, well, it's not positive for the film itself, but they are curious. For example, we know that at least two of the actresses were kind of witchy already. One is Firuza Balk and the other one is Rachel True. Rachel True, I think, still works in, a, um, in an esoteric shop and she gives tarot readings to clients. So, but the interesting thing about this movie, they hired, uh, I believe, a, high pri a weekend high priestess, I'm not sure. Her name is Pat Devon to be assistant on witchy topics and themes on the movie, so this would be as accurate as possible. And this is why the witchcraft is so well represented. But Devon always gave true information, but she demanded that they were changed. So if the film became popular, young girls wouldn't try to imitate their favorite characters and play with things they maybe don't understand. So, for example, Manon comes from Mananan MacLeod, a god of the sea in Irish or Gaelic mythology. The initia initiation rite is, it is quite similar to Wiccan initiation into covens, but it is changed. They uh, made a mistake in representing, you know, um, the four corners with the four elements with the elements of the four girls because each girl represents an element in the invocation of the spirit scene but it is also said that that was made uh, purposely because they wanted to change these things in case anybody would try to imitate to do this ritual in real life pretty cool because that makes you understand why so many elements seem accurate to those practicing real life witchcraft and understanding all of these elements and identifying with all of these elements even if they are changed and one last thing that this movie has that is magic is Aston Tazerna as Lirio. Lirio is the owner of the esoteric shop that these girls go to buy their witchy supplies to buy. And she's played by this Spanish Catalan actress that is amazing. Lirio, to me, makes one of the most interesting and intriguing characters in the movie, in spite of not being one of the main characters, because the main characters are these four girls. So I would totally buy a spin-off telling this story, the life story of Lirio, for real but it has to be played by Yasem Tazerna. If not, I don't want it. The other thing that is super cool, and I will finish with the pros with this, there is like a final battle in which the girls 
show up their magic and their power and their connection to the higher power, which is Manon. And it is quite epic. It was an exercise in sobriety that many people don't realize when they watch this movie. This movie. So because of all of these things, this movie will always be iconic as The Witches of Eastwick or as Practical Magic and any of these other pop culture witchcraft movies that are on the collective memory forever. This film is eternal. And as for cons or negative elements, I can't find any, sorry. It could have been improved, uh, be funnier or darker or what have you, but there aren't like negative elements that makes it crappier per se. And to me it's a 10 out of 10. And I also know that many people would disagree with me and that's fine. But to me, the 10 out of 10 movie or TV show is that one that you would watch on repeat again and again and again. And no matter how many years pass by that it doesn't grow old badly that you say, mm, why did I like this? It's a lot of years to say that if I watched a month ago and I loved it and I was reminded of why I love it and why the world witches and non-witches love it, I think that I can say this is one of my 10 out of 10. And yeah, that's all guys. Please provide some feedback. Tell me what you think about the film in the comments down below. Like if you like this video, don't dislike if not, that's completely unnecessary and rude. Please subscribe to this channel to keep updated and that would help me a lot. Of course, uh, click on the bell button so you receive notifications anytime that I upload a new review, recommendation or reaction. Don't forget to share this video in your social media if you think it can be of interest to your people or if you want them to make fun of my crappy English. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see each other in the next video. Bye.